So after that last tutorial I recorded, which was 30 minutes of the audio clipping, um, yeah, that, that was pretty demoralizing, and you know, you better believe that this time I checked the audio levels like five fucking times, and I'm talking a bit quieter. I don't want that mistake to happen again. Either way, uh, today we're doing a short tutorial with Geometry Nodes. We're gonna make this effect, and it's pretty simple. We're just gonna have two parameters, uh, the density of this, which I guess you don't wanna go too high, uh, but you can see the effect works for any density, and also we can kinda control this, uh, how much of it is wireframe and how much of it is dots kind of thing. So, you know, you didn't ask for it, <laughs> uh, but here it is anyway. So let's make this effect. It looks cool, it's simple, and you can brag to your friends. Uh, to do this, you're gonna need uh, one of the modern versions of geometry nodes. Just download the 3.0 alpha. Have you done that? You ha come back when you have. <laughs> okay, uh, so once you have that, go to geometry nodes. We're gonna make this super simple. So the cube, turn it into a geo nodes group, and we are just gonna start off with a grid that we are going to manipulate until it looks, uh, until it looks like gold, something worthy of the gold rush. Can you imagine dropping everything, going to California and digging for gold that you may or may not find? Same here. Okay, so we have a grid. Um, name of the game is we want part of this to be kind of like a scattering of dots, as you saw, uh, which we need to do some stuff to. And the other half, I want it to be a wireframe thing without a wireframe modifier, because we actually don't have that here. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, with the grid, I'm going to take the resolution and bring it up. In fact, since I want it to always be one by one, like I don't want there to be more on one axis than another, I'm just going to set up a little parameter for that. So this is already our resolution parameter. So we're already like, you know, halfway there <laughs> um, in some sense. Uh, we have our grid. What we want to do is make half of this wireframe, half of it dots. In other words, we need to separate the selection. We do that by uh, literally typing in separate geometry because we want to separate it. Uh, this way, when we select some of these uh, vertices or whatever, uh, we can have half of it be a grid and the inverted other half be dots. Uh, to randomize the selection, a lot of ways to do it, but I'm just going to use a noise texture uh, because we want to have kind of a continuous transformation. So noise texture, you try to plug it in, uh, nothing should happen because it's not, you know, this isn't a selection, it's just a texture. Um, however, if you take this and say noise texture, apply it to all the points and tell me where it's greater than some value, this is now a selection because every point inherits some uh, noise texture value. And some of it is going to be bigger than a half, some of it less than a half, and that's by definition a strict uh, selection, which means uh, this slider is going to be kind of like our how much is one side, how much is another side kind of thing. Um, and in fact, uh, we could do this just by faces to keep it queen, or you could do it by uh, points and edges and all this, which I actually find looks better. So we have our, I guess I should save it. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it, I don't know, available on Patreon. Best joke in the world. <laughs> um, what was I saying? So yeah, we have our selection, the one for the inverted point selection. Uh, let's work on the wireframe side, because right now it's going to look like kind of a mess. Um, to turn this into wireframe, nice little trick without using a wireframe modifier. We are going to take this mesh and convert it into a curve. So mesh to curve, which you're like, okay, what's the point? Now we just have curves. Take this and hear me out. Curve to mesh, <laughs> you're like, okay. So we've taken the mesh, converted it to a curve, and then the curve converted into a mesh. What's the point? Well, the point is in this step of it, when we're going back to curve to mesh, we can actually use a kind of like a, a guiding curve. And you'll see what I mean. Profile curve, that's what it's called. You plug that in, I'm just using a circle. Um, and you can see, we can actually highlight these edges using a certain you know thing. Um, it's going to look a bit weird until you take the radius down enough. So I'm just going to keep taking it down until it looks kind of flat. There we go. And we also don't need too much resolution here. Um, so yeah, <laughs> there you go. Now we have a, a wireframe modifier, kind of a cheap, inexpensive way of doing that. So again, we have this effect going on. Now, if I click the play button, nothing's going to happen because we haven't animated anything. Uh, but since we're using a noise texture, which is guiding this randomness, it would probably make sense to animate this. So I'm going to make this a four-dimensional noise, which is kind of like a seed value for the noise. And we just animate this thing by taking the frame number, dividing it by, like, I don't know, 150. This is going to animate it um, over time, but make it 150 times slower. Let's increase the resolution here so we can see a bit more of a pattern. Um, so you can see there's definitely kind of like clustering and uh, behavior uh, that makes sense here. Uh, we can actually change the quality of this noise. So if we take the scale down, it's going to be very blobular. 
which is a fun word. If I had to do a eulogy, if I was at a funeral for somebody I know and they're like, you got to you gotta do the speech, I'd be like, blob your, drop the mic. Um, yeah, so you can control the scale, uh, the detail, um, the roughness. The roughness is actually going to make it look quite chaotic, by the way. Um, we have a lot of properties here, but just animate the seed. And again, we can also say how much of this is a wireframe. So this is already cool, uh, but what we want to do is also use the inverted part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join this geometry, our kind of wireframe section. So if you think about it like this, this is our wireframe section. I'm going to take that and join it with the inverted, which what, what's it going to look like? Think about it. It's going to look like that. It's going to show us everything opposite. Again, if you want a queen, you just select faces, and then it's going to be exactly the inverted thing because you don't have some faces with only some points selected. But I'm just going to go with points, and you'll see why. We take this and we run it through. Well, we want this one to be a series of points. At least I said so. Although this looks cool in its own right. Uh, but if you want that, you need to instance something on the points. So we're going to instance on points. What are we going to instance? A UV sphere. Or just any mesh. You could have a monkey, whatever. And just like last time, keep dividing the radius until it looks good. Something like that. And you can see now every single point that was less left over um, has a sphere. If instead we had faces, you can see the issue is we have some overlap here. Uh, so that's why we have points. OK, cool. Um, another thing that will make this look better is um, we don't want all these spheres to be exactly the same, especially in terms of uh, size. Uh, by the way, before we address that, let me just lower the division count. We don't need this to be that high geometry. Uh, we want to. Um, what do we want? <laughs> uh, we want these to have different scales. Um, so we can either do this, but that's not going to randomize it, randomize them. Uh, so I say, why don't we just take the noise texture from before, which already has the same randomization data, plug it into the scale, uh, which you can see kind of works. Like some of them are slightly bigger than others. You can't really tell. Uh, so we need to filter this through a map range to make that uh, a bit more noticeable. And I'm thinking we could kind of change these um, input um, parameters, which will kind of make this higher contrast in a sense. So we're saying, take the noise texture, only look at the values between, I don't know, 0.29 and 5.5 and scale them between 0 and 1. Uh, the closer these are, kind of the more insane our scaling is going to be. So here you can see we have a very uh, nice effect where the scaling also has this noise to it, and it all kind of feels like it fits together. Uh, yes, you could have used like a, a random value uh, for this, but it wouldn't have been tied to it in any way, and you have the flickering as well. So that is why we do it this way. Um, also, I don't know if this will, I haven't tried this before, but you see how we lowered this so much that, you know, we might as well make it shade smooth. I think it's possible now. Uh, we had a bit of an issue with fields, but now, uh, we might, yeah, I think we have a set shade smooth node. Um, boop. There we go. Now it's all shade smoothed. And maybe we just want to increase the geometry to the point where it's not as visible. So maybe 14. Okay. So there is our base effect. Just want to uh, reemphasize. So this is our other parameter, by the way. So we have our resolution parameter and also our filter parameter. So I just want to reemphasize filter parameters saying how much is this a spheres or grid or somewhere in between. Our resolution is the resolution, you know, and we can make the scaling of the spheres and all that dependent on this one, but whatever. Not going to do it now, but I am going to make the spheres a tiny, whoops, a tiny, <laughs> struggling with that, a tiny bit smaller. Okay. Um, so now, if we were to look at this in rendered view, in Eevee, and also turn off all the uh, environment and maybe the lights and all that, it kind of looks stupid. I mean, it looks cool. Um, but let's just give this thing a bit of color and make it glow. So to do this, I'm going to get rid of the light just so we have nothing. And we want to make sure we have a, a set material node. That's what it's called now. It used to be a um, material assign. Now it's set material, just to confuse you. A set material node. Um, whatever material we make, it's not going to work unless we filter it through this. I'm just going to give it a material. And then for that material, which we can call glow, and you can see it updates here. Uh, for that glow, we're just going to give it an emission so it can show up in the blackness. And I'm also going to enable bloom so, you know, it blooms. Uh, we want to give this thing a bit of color. So 
Easy way to do this, I'm just going to color ramp between two different colors. One of them can be red, and one of them can be yellow, something like that. And uh, to transition between them, because right now there is no transition, minus this uh, factor, um, I'm just going to use a gradient texture set to diagonal, so as it goes this way. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm just going to set this to easing, bring it up a bit. Whoops, other one. Bring that up a bit. And you can see that uh, we actually have a issue going on. It, it, maybe this is what you want. It does look cool. Uh, but you're going to notice that the diagonal gradient works with the wireframe. But with these spheres, each sphere has its own like little gradient. It's not like... How do I explain this? Here we go. So here's the black and white gradient going diagonally, but each sphere also has its own gradient. It's not part of this bigger one. Um, if you've run into this issue or similar issues before, could be frustrating. Uh, literally, all you have to do is for these instances, um, and the, the thing is, each instance has its own gradient. Uh, we got to make sure uh, to realize our instances. Uh, what this means is it's going to take all our instances and no longer think of them as a bunch of copies, but just as one big mesh. Uh, which eventually does slow down uh, the playback, which is why I actually turned down the geometry. So you can see now we have this kind of like gradient going all the way across, um, if you know what I mean. So you can you can really tell. Um, but to be honest with you, I haven't tried it before, but without realize instances almost looks cooler, <laughs> uh, which is kind of useful because it would require less computation to do it this way. Um, but either way, just so you know, uh, the issue there is realize instances and uh, you turn up the strength until it glows. You pick colors that you like with a good transition and that's uh, the essence of the effect. Not much else to go over, so yeah. Okay, this is the part of the tutorial, I guess, where I'm going to pimp out uh, Patreon. So yes, Patreon exists. I want to thank everybody 740 some um, active patrons that are there. Uh, what do you get if you are a Patreon? Well. Patron, God damn it! Well, you get early access to tutorials. Sometimes it kind of depends. Um, usually, whenever I can, when there isn't a sponsorship or something going on. So, for example, uh, this tutorial, uh, early access. Uh, you also get exclusive tutorials every once in a while. I tend to make like one tutorial series a month or something like that, of like five or something tutorials where you get, you know, a pretty in-depth behind-the-scenes look at that. Um, additionally, Discord access. Although the Discord's not as popping as it used to be. Not going to lie. Uh, but also, Patreon newsletter, blend files. This blend file is going to be available. Um, again, thank you all patrons, and thank you anybody watching up until this point, the very end of the tutorial, uh, for listening to the whole thing and considering. Um, helps both channels, this one and CG Matter. Either way, uh, that's it. I'm going to come back when I feel a bit better and have more of that fiery energy to give you. Well, that's it.